This is the Mike Pecky Coaches Show, brought to you by Xfinity, official entertainment partner of Real Salt Lake. Hello and welcome back to the Mike Pecky Coaches Show, presented by Xfinity. I'm your host, Brian Dunseth. He's the coach, Pecky Mike. How you doing, Mike? Actually, no, don't even I say take, anything. I, I don't even care. I don't that, even though. care. Stick to sports, bro. You're the host Stick and I'm the coach. If you're not talking about soccer ball, I don't want to hear what host. you have to say. Oh my gosh. It's a pretty aggressive opening, right? Yeah, I liked yeah. it. Well, that, I got mean, my road rage after out. After we started talking about the Mike Pecky Coaches Show on social media, we started talking about Off the Chest, the podcast mm -hmm. that we record right afterwards. Yeah. Immediately, first tweet out, first tweet out is we're trying to bring the world our comedy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I got an update for you on... Uh, Am I funny? No, we have a poll. What's the poll? The, the Bruce Arena? Whose Bruce Arena impression was better? Listen, I'll, I, I'll save it for later. No, no, no. no I, you don't have to save it for later. I know yeah. it's going to be you because you probably had your friends and family jump on. You probably There's had, your, you probably had your youngest yeah. sitting there like this with the return button. Just like this with his little... He's a year and four toy. months, so I think it's more like smash, smash, okay. smash. All right, I know how that's going to turn out. <laughs> let's, let, let's proceed. So uh, just in case you at home didn't catch my vibe right there, what we're talking about is how uh, topics for our show are illustrated in kind of weird ways. The, the idea of stick to sports as a mm -hmm. mantra. Uh, you and I get this pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I do. On, I mean, you're active on social media, but you do it in a different way than I utilize my social media. But the moment that I'm not necessarily talking about soccer, there's a weird it's line. It's, it's a weird gray area all of yeah. a sudden. It's whether it's my parenting, whether it could be something that is, is supportive of, of a political nature. If there's something uh, just, just a randomness that I'm retweeting or liking or that I'm just pushing around on social media for the betterment of a, of a conversation, all of a sudden it's... You're just supposed to be talking about soccer, bro. Is, I don't that, the, is that the stay in your lane? I don't follow you yeah. for anything other than soccer, so just keep it at that. Do, do you ever get that? Oh, many times. I mean, as recently as this podcast and the show, mm. you know, we were just talking about it, and I might have stole your thunder, you were going to bring it up, but, you know, I had one comment saying, you know, you're a coach, you should be thinking about soccer 24 7, mm. and, you know, your team is in this place, and Gotta score you goals lost and last three game, points. you shouldn't be doing this. And to me, you know, it's one of those things that you read it and you know, swipe it away. You know, it doesn't bother me because, you know, I'm no different than an average American. You know, average Americans have, you know, we have a lot of people standing back here right now. We have a beautiful have camera woman right here. We have tonight. Tyler in the other room. Um, you know, we have opinions. You know, this is our society. This is our, our, our country, you know. And I think what gets blown out of proportion is that when you are somewhat, and I'm not a celebrity, I'm not... Uh, a big time guy you know I have a platform though and I think once you have a platform people don't want to hear that because you know? you're a public figure. because you're somewhat I, I, again I, it's hard for me to say I'm a public figure well, but you are. You're I guess I am I'm a coach of a, yeah. of a team yeah. is that you know some people accept it some people don't want to hear anything about that they just want to say hey this is what you are you're 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 pigeonholed into this category mm. that's all you should be doing so w we you and I, when we started this show and, and then we decided to do Off the Chest as a podcast, a kind of an extension of the show, to get into different conversations. But it's been interesting because when I talk to people on my side of the business, the, the first thing they ask is, so w what exactly is it? You know, <laughs> like I've, I've watched you guys do your show. I don't, I don't know until a half hour before the show. And I love, I love that part of it. Because we like it. to keep it fresh because yeah. I like your reaction. I don't want to know what, what's going on. But, but people look at a... A professional sports coach and doing a coach's show should be X's and O's. Yeah. That is the exact opposite of what, of we what we've ever wanted yeah. to do. So how often do you find yourself... Because as, as you kind of absorb all of this kind of social media criticism, I kind of started thinking about, for us, you know, like the whole, the whole mantra, like, don't trust a chef that isn't a healthy chef because... <laughs> Maybe they're not really. Only that chef good I don't it. trust is a seafood chef that is serving when in you're the middle, in Colorado? middle of the country <laughs> with no water anywhere around. How That's long did the it take one. you to eat sushi? Two and a half years in Colorado. Was it at least good when you had it? It was actually unbelievable. Yeah. And a good friend of mine was saying from the day one, you have to eat the sushi. You have to. Eat. I just couldn't comprehend it. So did you go to our good friend uh, Tony Beltran's father-in-law's restaurant? That's basically the only Takashi. That's basically the only place I eat at on date night with my wife. It's the only place we go to, and we always go through the routine. Hey, you want to go here? I want to go there, and we play the little game, and we always say, hey, let's just go back to Takashi. <laughs> Best I've ever had. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. So, I'll, I'll, ha have you ever kind of found yourself in? Could, can you at least understand the realm in which kind of 
people on social media operate. Number one, they're behind a screen. There, there is no true accountability. Whatever you say doesn't have real life ramifications for yeah. the most part yeah. until someone steps out of bounds and then yeah. all of a sudden their job is on the line. But have you ever have you ever found yourself kind of thinking, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not here to listen to what you're saying yeah. about any other subject other than what your lane you're operating in. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty careful, you know, and that goes against who I am as a character, as, as you've known for, for many years. I'm very outspoken on certain things. I'm very particular politically what I say. Uh -huh. And there's, I, you could research uh, social media, interviews, and I can't remember the last thing politically that Crime I of said. the century? That, I don't know how it was politically. That was more of a... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was in my young days when I, I actually made a public threat towards somebody, which I, 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 I'm, I'm very upset about. But anyway, uh, I'm more on the social issues, mm. you know? Social issues are huge to me. But when we talk about political issues, why shouldn't I be able to say my political issues mm. just because of who I am? You know, I mean, to me, it always comes down to one side of a politician, whether it's right or left, having an issue with that, yeah. whether it's LeBron James speaking out, whether it's, you know, Kaepernick. Brian Dunseth, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Yeah. You know, it's always one side because it doesn't go along the lines of their views. Is it the political environment that we find ourselves in? This is, to me, political environment nowadays is, I can't, I, I, I can't, I'm trying to think of an adjective to use. It's so explosive right mm. now. You know, you could turn on one channel, you know, CNN say, you know, and you hear somebody say something about an issue, whether you believe it or not, you go away and you say, hmm, wow, he made a really good case. Then you flip the channel to Fox, uh, News. Fox yeah. News or something like yeah. that, and they make the direct opposite yeah. argument, and you're like, wow, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and to young kids nowadays, it's a very tough political environment to navigate, I feel. You know, I mean, my, my Even kids. Even for us. My, yeah, for me, for sure. I mean, I'm sitting there going like this. Um, you don't know what's true and what's not true. There's a report that comes out against the president, and then the president says it's not true, and then there's this and there's that. And it's just, to me, accountability comes into, well, who's right and who's wrong? How come there's not transparency? How come there's not this? One on a riff, I'm, I'm going to stop myself there, uh, and that's a big reason why I don't take a stance or, or talk about my political views. I talk mm -hmm. about that with my family. I don't air those things because it's just, I feel that if I came out and said what I felt politically about one thing, there could be a potential that the next time I go to my game, whether there's 10,000 or 20,000 people yeah. there, half there could be protesting my pecky and saying this. And by the way, I'm not scared of that. I just don't want to invite that to my family and myself. Yeah. Whereas social issues, you know, is much more easy to me. I am hard stance on this right, women's rights, um, gay rights, what, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I'm a hard sexual stance orientation, on that. Um, race, r women's hard, rights. Hard line on that. So, so you and I have, have been pretty outspoken in, in terms of support, um, especially in the community of Salt Lake. Yeah. Uh, obviously national, but specifically here. Did you did you feel any blowback? Because I never, I, not not I, at all. You know, I I got blowback, but you know why I got blowback on social media? I got blowback on Twitter, but nobody associated with any type of name or picture. It was like just the the fake accounts that were built with the egg. They hadn't even they hadn't even got to the level where they were. Do you want to they hear were something? Invested into really talking trash. That's amazing you just said that because I forgot it. What the episode that we did? It might have been that episode. Mm -hmm. And I made a comment that, no, it might have been one or two after about social media and about do you feel, you know, do you get upset about things? And my own thing was, no, you know, but I, I respect more people who, Jim Johnson, you know, mm. said this, not, not um, RSL 250 slash backslash whatever <laughs> with no name behind Happy it. Smiley and one face. guy after that thing had a pretty hard comment about my playing, my coaching and stuff. Yeah. And the last thing he said, and it actually had a name, like I said, and you could see my name right there. Yeah. And I respected that. Yeah. I said, hey, I think I like that tweet. No, and, and, and just so you know, it's a side topic, but I would love for Twitter, Instagram, whatever, to be able to sign up for an account that you have to be verified. Verified, we talked that about that in that episode. Just the importance, and, yeah. and I just think in, in general terms of accountability, because I think about, just the kids in the audience. Thomas, yeah, you, you and we I have Thomas up here. In you, a you, you and I have have kids right now that are navigating um, school life, and bullying, and sports, and social, and then you it. throw in social media. You and I are lucky. We're old, yeah. right? <laughs> like Facebook was just starting to get into a verified form that uh, anybody could have a Facebook page, not yeah. just kids in college. And that was at the end of my career in 2006. My first computer was in the common area of my freshman year dorm in, uh, in college. Okay. My first cell phone was my second year of college. 
You know, Facebook, I mean, Facebook, I've never been on Facebook, first of all. My first social media account was when I was 37 years old. Mm. You know, it's just such a different day Was Mike Pecky taken at that point? I've always wanted to ask you. I don't know. The Red Bull came to me and said, hey, there's this new thing, Twitter. We want you to be a presence on that. Sal. And I go, okay. It you was know, I had no Brian idea what Twitter Sal. was. Brian Sal did it too. Brian Sal, B. Sal. He yeah. was the best ever. Yeah. But to get back to what I was saying is that, um, and I, don't, I honestly don't By remember By the way, Tyler, said that, that hurts that you said that Brian Sal is better than Tyler. He's saying it in my ear. Well, I work with Tyler still, so I have to keep him on his toes, okay? <laughs> and if Tyler gave me a, a, a freaking earpiece, he, I'd thought, be able to hear what, what he's saying. To your he never gave me one. He expects me to go out to the technology store and buy one. And I'm walking in and there's 10,000 earpieces. What am I gonna buy? I love that you said technology store. Technology <laughs> store. Was, do they have Radio Shacks anymore? We are so <laughs> off topic right now. Um, have you guys ever heard of Radio Shack? It's like Have antelope. you ever dialed a rotary phone? Do you know what a rotary phone is? Yes. Yeah. Would you know how to dial it? Thomas, come here. We're way off topic yeah, way now, off but topic. I'm just going with Bring it. it. Come right in here, What's buddy. What's up, Thomas? How are you, buddy? Oh. Hello. What's your name? Thomas what? Uh, Thomas Kirchner. Okay. Thomas is... I don't so want to watch, say my well, favorite. Check out the red lights. It's a, the red lights we have to go yeah, to. Yeah, don't back up. Don't get nervous. Yeah. It's just... It's, it's a square. So... The red light, that'll tell you. So we just taught Mike, when the red light is on, that's the camera he's supposed to look to. So there's one over that's, there. That's, there's that's one why I'm right looking there. at this one when that one's There's one right there. here. And then that's his single he shot. He doesn't care about call, the red the light. Way, we call you're, that the vanity You're shot. hijacking that's my thing. Shot. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, Sorry, ready? If you had, if, ready? Here's, a, um, here's an old school phone, a rotary phone. It goes like this, you know, the thing up here. Mm -hmm. Show me how you would dial a number right now. Take me through the whole process. So basically you dial it like, it's almost like a circle yep. or spherical thing where there were more than, I believe, 10 numbers, but only one of them was a zero. And you'd send it to a current, like a different number and something would hit it yep. after it hit that, sensing the number and it would say that. And then you'd keep on doing that a certain amount of times yep. until it called that number. Okay, last thing before we're going to really bid good, you adieu. It's really good. But really good. Ready? Make pretend you call me right now. My number is one. Just go. Okay. Hello. Okay. Thomas, my good man, stuff, buddy. say goodbye. Say hello to your family. Okay. okay. <laughs> the one thing Thomas didn't do is pick, pick the, the phone up. up. Yeah. It's the one thing he didn't do. <laughs> because when the phone rings nowadays, they go like this. Hello. The, I miss you, the, the man. By the way, the, the coolest part—the coolest part when it went from that phone is when it went to the wall phone, and it was just the punch buttons. Yeah. And then you'd have this super long cord that you could walk into the other room and still be on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I know Tyler. We sound really, really old. Tell Tyler to <laughs> shut up. All right. Where were we? And um, where are we getting back to? Because that was my you, favorite segment okay, of so all time. Okay. So expert with outside of soccer. Yeah. Do you consider yourself an expert in, on anything other than ice bowling? Ice bowling. By the way, there was a Jeopardy question last night. It had to do with curling, and I nailed it. I forgot Did what you? it was, and my wife looked over. Ice like, bowling really? was the answer? What is Am ice I bowling? Am I an expert? Now, I'm going to put, usually we do, do some funny stuff, jokes and stuff, but yeah. I don't consider myself an expert in many things. Mm. Uh, I have opinions on a lot of things, you know? And the one thing that I am able to do, which I've been called a walking contradiction from my family and friends, because I could see two sides of something, yeah. you know? Whereas I have a hard line without hearing the other side right so, away, no, this and that. So no, I'm not an expert what, what, in anything else. Okay, so, so what if it was like, I don't know, growing up as a kid, um, you were into World War II, or you were into, uh, you, know, uh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Would you consider yourself, I don't know. No. Uh, if, uh, would you ever consider yourself such a massive fan that you feel like you are intelligent enough to have a conversation yeah, to be different. within the concept 100%, of the conversation? Yeah. 100%. Politics is not one of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, social issues, um, things like that, other sports, you know, looking at tactics from football. But I'm not, I'm not egotistical enough to sit back and say, I know what's right in that sport. I know what that person should have done. I know what this is right. No, I'm, I'm not an expert in anything. I have widely ranging opinions that I stand behind for the most part, but I'm also able to listen to the other side mm. on, cert, uh, on many things, not yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and listen to the other side and, and have a good debated conversation. Because, you know, when, when we go back in history and you can go all the way back to kind of Muhammad Ali or you can go as recent as Kaepernick, hmm. there's, there's strong political views that can be taken as a stance for the collective 
or that can be looked at as um, an unbelievably selfish individual decision that yeah. is yeah. costing their teammates or their sport in one way or another. And, and now, because of the political realm that we find ourselves in, you're either hard left or you're hard right when we see some of these athletes athletes speak their mind. Yeah. Well, if, I mean, you have to trace it back. Sorry, you have to yeah. trace it back to, you know, an early time. Forget about Jesse Owens. I mean, that was a different type of thing. He didn't have. He wasn't making a political statement. He was just caught in something. But um, what the heck were their names? Uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, I think it was, with the black glove at mm -hmm. the Olympics. Yeah. You know, I mean, the statement they were making for human rights, you know, and then to be stripped of their gold medal because mm -hmm. of that. Uh, Muhammad Ali, the Vietnam War, human rights as well. Billie Jean King for the, uh, what was it, the War of the Sexes? Yeah. With, with, with yeah. the tennis thing. And then you have the other side of it, and, and besides Billie Jean King, Muhammad Ali and, and uh, the, other, the other guys, the Black Glove, I mean, they, they were ostracized in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you have someone like Jimmy Carter who boycotts the Moscow Summer Olympics he does, not the Olympians does, yeah. you know? And so that's two sides of it. It's one side's political as the athlete that's being cast down on, and then you have the politician taking something in his own hands, yeah. you know? And, and, and you could argue it was because of this, because of the Russian embargo versus Afghanistan, whatever the heck it was. But it, it's a two-sided thing, and that goes back to what I said before, is that I feel that politicians are not happy with sports figures or actors or public figures yeah. speaking political because it always has to go against one side and that side is the one that says well they shouldn't be talking about this stay in your lane yeah you know and that that to me is i believe in freedom of speech i believe in uh, the freedoms of this country so how could we not have a freedom to voice our opinion without being ostracized so you and i have kind of touched on this subject before we touched on it a few weeks ago in terms of how you manage your locker room but it, it's a tough climate right now. Mm -hmm. And especially for kids that are recognizing that what they do on the field is important, but how they brand themselves and how they commercialize themselves off the field is financially very mm -hmm. important as well. Yeah. Um, e e even those, we, we all, uh, we, I guess I call them do to do's. You know, there's that kid that's the do to do mm -hmm. in the locker room mm -hmm. that you know is going to do something like, what, what are you doing? One yeah. of those moments. I is there a way to, and I know you hate micromanaging players. I know you hate micromanaging your locker room. Is there a way to, in this environment, as we're, we're constantly in flux, is there, is there a way to help these kids out navigating what their own personal decisions are with the way that they, with the way that they go about their social media? I, I, I do my best. It, it doesn't come up very often with me. Because uh, again, we talked about before about being an expert versus not. I'm not an expert on how to handle social media. Mm -hmm. I have my opinions it's on an evolution. what, what I there. would do yeah. and how I handle my thing. Yeah. There's been few, there's been few moments as far as social media and things like that that I've had discussions with my players. You know, but I, I think that that's more of the Tyler, you know, and the Matt and the media yeah. people to handle because, again, I don't want to take away someone's voice. You know, I'll give you a quick thing. And uh, this might be my first political statement ever, to be honest with you. The Colin Kaepernick thing. Uh, I had a hard stance as far as how I felt is that I didn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I agree with what I, I didn't agree how it was done. I agree, honestly, with, with what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Cal, Colin followed by many other athletes. I didn't agree with how they were doing it because that's, that's my belief. I didn't, I wasn't protesting them, okay? I saw both sides of it. Yes, th there is a very bad climate with what you're protesting right now, but the American flag, blah, 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 was born like this. Okay, I had players, some players come to me and they say, hey, you know, we were thinking about perhaps, you know, taking a stance during oh, okay. the national anthem. Wow. And again, to think about that, I, that's not the way that I would do it. Yeah. My response to them was, I'm behind you 100%. Just make sure that you understand why you're doing it, mm. that you believe in it, because this is going to come down. And what the ramifications Yeah, the ramif are. And yeah. I will stand behind you as a ramification because that's your freedom to protest mm. 100%. So I hope you understand what I'm saying is that yeah. while I don't agree with something, I could see with both sides, you know, and, and ended up it didn't happen, but I was there right behind them. Really cool way to end the show. Appreciate it. Show's ended already. That was quick. That'll do it for this week, folks. Like always, we appreciate you tuning in to the KSL TV app. We have a new episode available every Wednesday morning. And if you guys like the show, give our new podcast, Off the Chest, a listen. Currently available everywhere and anywhere you subscribe to your podcast. We'll see you next week.
Take care.